I want to start this video with a little plea phase, because admittedly this was not the original plan for episode 12 that I alluded to in my response to the F1 title nor my Twitter updates. After some reevaluation, I chose to push that plan back slightly. As I said before, the video being covered is a frustrating endeavor, ripe with repetition and flaws out the wazoo, but it's also exhausting and I was risking burnout thinking about it. So instead of an established plan, it'll just be an eventuality that will show up when it's ready. There's a big plan for that video, so it's probably for the best that I give it the time to believe, rather than force it into an arbitrary slot. I have more than enough projects I can go into in the meantime anyway, so I hope you guys enjoy the other videos I have in store, including this one. Previously in the mess we call the Stag Force. But why did you wish to share this with me all of a sudden? Well, Matt, it's important we take a step back and look at our shortcomings in life every so often to improve ourselves as an individual. You're using this as an excuse to fix your timeline. Listen here, Obato Obato. Being so smart isn't such a good thing. It can make you a bit of a jerk. Are you still upset about missing out on the chain? It's staggering time. And now an unplanned sequel. Matt, why are you outside? I have a reputation to uphold. I read in a report that being outside can help improve one's way of thinking. Has it worked? Results are inconclusive. I have garnered some thoughts being out here, however. Really? What's up? After readjusting your catalog not too long ago, do you have any thoughts on Blaze the Movie fan currently? Hmm. Well, I know he still frequently releases content. I haven't watched a lot of it in a while, though. I do recall him asking for my input on a video a while ago. Did you ever give it to him? I haven't, but I do have some free time now. I guess I could get my notes written up. Do you intend to stay out, Eel? Probably. I want to see if I can get better results. Alright, I'm gonna chill out as well. Have fun with your testing. If you watched my previous Tag Force episode, be it the 2019 Christmas version or the Wii Made version from two months ago, then you should be familiar with Blaze the Movie Fan. You also won't recall our story because it's pretty much the same as before. He asked me over Discord if I could look over one of his videos, only difference between then and now is it didn't take me as long to get to it. The context is as follows. The year is 2016. Here's a commentator named Clay Claymore. Naked Douglas, a video essayist, doesn't like Clay Claymore and made a video saying as such. Clay subbed to the Douglas' video, prompting Douglas to make another one. Clay then decides to file back for a response, so Douglas makes a final one, and then Clay hits that. Fast forward almost six years later to June 2022, and Clay decides to cover all three of Douglas' videos in one. Blaze comes in with a commentary on Clay's video one month later, and here I am, fashionably late because that's just part of the blind at this point. Now one thing I will have to emphasize is that I will include a degree marker for this. When that degree marker turns purple, that's in reference to me going to that degree's original video. This is going to be relevant, to my annoyance, because I'll be hitting all degrees at various points, and they will sometimes be separated from the chain itself. I'm also skipping over Blaze's introductions, however I do want to bring attention to this. My opinion on that kid Douglas has also changed. Back then I used to think that that kid Douglas was fucking Armstrong. But honestly, I now see his videos for the low quality carpets that they are. And because of the fact that I don't like his videos anymore, there is one nickname that I'm gonna give that kid Douglas. And that is that cunt Douglas. Why am I calling him that cunt Douglas? Well, because he's a dishonest asshole. And I will be giving some examples of what I'm talking about as I'm doing this commentary. This will be relevant for a handful of issues Blaze's section will have, but it's worth noting that Blaze has some sort of bias for Clay and against Douglas. That's enough you need, so we can get to the commentary. Broccoli, coconut, hot dog. <laughs> Nicole and Denise said you wanted to see me because you had something important to tell me regarding the release of True Colors. Yeah, about that. Remember when I told you that True Colors would premiere on May 1st? Yeah, that's not gonna happen. We're delaying it due to a scheduling shift. Are you kidding me, Michael? We settled on this premiere date months ago, and now you're telling me it's being delayed because of a last minute scheduling shift? What scheduling shift was so important that you needed to delay True Colors at the last minute? That's a closely guarded secret. I tried to get Gary to tell me what the real reason behind the delay was, but he wouldn't budge. Look, I know you're mad, but we are not delaying this episode because we want to censor it. You and your crew's original vision for this episode will remain intact. 
If that's supposed to make me feel better about the network's complete incompetence in regards to the release of this episode, then honestly it doesn't. I am so furious I can't even see straight. Everything is going to be fine. We've covered all our bases. The episode is not going to leak, which would result in spoilers being posted all over the internet, which would piss off the fan base. But that's not going to happen. Don't worry. Be happy, Matt. We're the Walt Disney Company. We've got this. <laughs> God, guys, I really want to know, at what point was that supposed to be fucking funny? Because that fucking sketch, like, drug on for, like, two minutes, and the payoff sucked. What if the point of the skit wasn't to be funny, but to just give context to the situation at hand? A skit can be reasonably entertaining without having ha-has as a priority. I will give you that Douglas's skit still has a number of problems. The dialogue is too stilted, especially towards the end, which basically gives away its punchline before it's made. It's filled with several pauses and bluffs that make it feel dried out and longer than necessary. Douglas doesn't add any emotion to the characters in the skit, especially the director, who is supposed to be angry doing this. The characters don't have a distinctive voice between one another, and some other nitpicks that could be given. Mind you, these are structural problems that have to do with Douglas's editing and voice acting. Humor isn't a factor in these issues because it doesn't try to make any jokes on what is happening. It really just comes off as an introduction to the topic. On that note, I want to point out the video Douglas's skit comes from is vastly unrelated to the West of Clay's video and doesn't come back up for any reason. Why it's even here is frankly beyond me. Honestly, the biggest problem that I have with this skit personally is that I couldn't even tell what the hell was going on. I mean seriously, I couldn't follow it at all. And also, you had a clip of Emma Prevost using the word fuck and may he rest in peace. But yet, many times in the video, you use the word fuck and censor it. Why would you use a clip of the word fuck if you censor it when you yourself say it? I don't fucking get it. I don't see what's confusing about the skit. I can see it being here as confusing, but not the skit itself. The skit is talking about a producer hijacking the time slot of a director's established episode out of the blue, and the unfortunate repercussions that followed. That was my understanding of it before I looked it up, by the way. I feel like you just aren't paying attention. Also, what is the problem with him not censoring an outsourced clip but censoring himself? It feels like an arbitrary thing to be hung up on. I love hearing Super Mario 64 music being played at a really high volume. Also, I like that you use Comic Sans. Just shows how much effort you really put into your videos. I love extremely vague complaints that border on being non-issues. No, really, it's the best. Let me explain. I've been pretty outspoken about bad audio balance in a couple of past videos of Wolf and Sons. So when I tell you this is rather exaggerated, it should tell you something. Looking at the audio waves, the Mario 64 music doesn't seem awfully loud, especially compared to other sources of music like what's in your intro. So I can't see what's awfully loud about it to warrant this complaint. The other complaint is just stupid. What about the use of Comic Sans dictates the amount of effort Douglas puts into his work? Is it because you think it's a default font? Well, that's incorrect because the default fonts are usually known as Aerial, Calibre, or Vendana. Is it because it's ugly? That's subjective and has no bearing on his capabilities. I don't get it. This call out for him using Comic Sans is just stupid and petty. Yeah, I think this intro is here too. In my opinion, the worst aspect of it is that who the hell wants to see just a guy walking casually with his fucking coffee? What's so exciting about that? There's nothing even remotely exciting about that. It's fucking boring. Yeah, I have no idea what the hell that kid talkers was even thinking with that shit. Round two of assuming things, but they don't make any sense, I guess. 
Why are you looking at a 3 second clip of someone walking and thinking that's supposed to be entertaining? In fact, how does that be the clutch of what makes the intro boring? The scene alongside the coffee making was likely set up for the rest of the intro, which is simulating Douglas watching various internet videos before going into his land. Does this mean intro good? Fuck no. There's issues with it, but it's an intro from 2016 which Douglas doesn't even use anymore. I have my limits. I'm not expending more bluff on this. Both of you need to get over yourselves. So, without any further ado, let's examine why Clay Claymore is so bad. Let's start with Twitter Salt. That was also horribly loud. Don't worry folks, from this point on, I will do my best to fix the audio levels because Doug didn't care enough to do it himself. Paul Todd, you already see this in your previous video on him. I mean, don't get me wrong, I agree that this is a massive problem with the video, but it doesn't change the fact that you already see this in a previous video. Also, keep this in mind folks, this will become important later. Oh, that previous video from... Ah, yes, 2016. How did you say that and not think about the several factors that could go into him retreading old points? The simplest of which being there are likely people who were one into this video first and thus wouldn't be concerned about the video from five and a half years ago. And you also don't give any clips or context to what Clay said before. So I don't know Blaze, did he say this in a previous video because you didn't care to show us that. Have you ever wanted to go to a safe space filled with glorious salty tears? Just go to Clay Claymore's Twitter page. I mean, his entire Twitter presence is built around him attacking cartoon fandom and, well, other types of fandom, attacking people who he deems weird, cringy, and awkward, and, of course, accusing other people of being racist. Douglas, did you look at who that is and what they're saying? I'll give you benefit of the doubt. Maybe you didn't when you made this. So let me explain who Borg is, to my understanding at least. Borg was a winter who commonly took interest in the slideshow commentary community, having made a number of videos on various members. His personality in his videos did lean towards hard conservative seeming, and to my recollection, there's at least one instance of him using the N-word that I can find. I don't like being forced into a situation to talk because some people expect me to be cheerful like a cocaine addicted dick. This is after the fact, planted. I don't know what he was like back in 2016, but just looking at the tweet by itself and believing Borg to be racist isn't that much of a slush. As a black man, I would not be okay with someone saying that some other black man, regardless of what he's done, has caused him to think about joining a neo-Nazi group that proudly proclaims it wants to commit black genocide, even if it's supposed to be some sort of joke. Additional note, after I finished my script, I discovered Borg made a win on Clay Claymore and an archive of it still exists. I don't know when it was exactly made, but the archive was uploaded a little after a week from Douglas' video. Let's give it a watch. Hello everyone, this is Berg Productions here with my most controversial rant to date. Yes folks, this will be a very racist rant. Who am I ranting on today? It's none other than that idiotic nick- That's all we need from that. I won't bother you with the rest of the video, but I can tell you he caps it off with watermelons, cotton picking, and flight chicken. You know, because effort isn't a quality this video has, even in its racism. Final thoughts? One of the weakest edition tapes I've ever seen for the Plot Boys. Let's quickly go through some of my favorite tweets from the man, the myth, the legend, Clay Claymore. Dear Reaction Community, nobody cares about what you thought about E3. Stop it! Now, that tweet I just showcased really just goes to show you how much of a hypocritical asshole Clay Claymore really is. And why is that? Because I think reaction videos are some of the laziest, low-effort videos anyone on YouTube could ever make. Now, Clay, I just find it so funny how you constantly harp on the mysterious Mr. Enter and O3B Good for complaining about stupid, unimportant bullshit, when here you are doing the exact same shit, complaining about stupid, unimportant bullshit. That's why he sees you as a hypocritical asshole. You're certain that Mr. Enter and O3B Good shouldn't be complaining about meaningless bullshit, but here you are bitching about people making reaction videos to their thoughts on e You're free to find reaction videos to be the lowest form of content, but unless they're deliberately stealing, what exactly is worth bitching about people reacting to something like e You don't care for it? Cool, don't watch it then. No one is forcing you to watch these reaction videos, and you can remove these videos from your recommendations. I didn't have this with Oswald, I ain't having it here. Then again, you look like someone who would enjoy that garbage. And you top it off with blatant ad hominem after cutting him off and throwing a red hand to change the discussion. 
You ain't slack. Honestly, I will give you this. I really don't see how what you said here is hypocritical in any way. But you do seem to be slick enough to get blue blaze. Blaze, however, I'll get to that in time. Speaking of, Blaze, did you consider the context that is in Douglas's video that I show when you made this statement? Or did you just look at this single statement without hearing the entirety of Douglas's point in whole? Because if it's the latter, you really should be more diligent in getting the full context before making a declaration like that. If it's the former, put up an argument against it, please. Otherwise, anyone who does have the context will be wondering how this doesn't count as hypocrisy. Sit down. Frank. Stand up. Frank. Pass out. Frank. Now, I know most of you are probably not familiar with the guy in that picture. Luckily, I know who he is. That's a guy by the name of The Gamer's Joint, and he's primarily known on YouTube for doing Kingdom Hearts videos. Okay, so what? I don't give a f who that guy is. I just looked up his three reaction videos and just randomly picked whatever was there. But to say that you don't care who he is after the discussion, seriously, the fact that you don't care about him is such a pointless thing to bring up. Also, that kid Douglas brought up who he is to give information to his own. Though, I have a problem with what that kid Douglas is saying here. You're so damn weird. He's a YouTuber that really does Kingdom Hearts videos. That doesn't really explain anything. How so? Kingdom Hearts videos does have a number of things it could be referencing, but the general idea is that the gamer's joint makes videos around Kingdom Hearts. If you want a speciality described, here's your answer. Everything. Let's Plays, Countdowns, Guides, Mod Showcases, News Coverage, Discussions, Speculation, Theory Crafting, Shalala and Gameplay Reactions, Responses. If Kingdom Hearts can be reasonably attached to it, you might find it in its repertoire. The variance in those types of content also lends to why Douglas chose to leave it at Kingdom Hearts videos, because it's accurate and gives the main idea a gloss. Blaze, did you consider any of this before trying to market that explanation as vague? You know, I find it funny how when it comes to things that are that important, you spent three fucking minutes making that point, but when it comes to what actually is important, you barely say anything. Yeah, that is a huge inconsistent issues with your videos. If you wanna explain to the audience who this guy is, you have to do more than just saying he's made it all for Kingdom Hearts videos. I mean, come on, you should actually explain who he is, not give vague descriptions. I already went over how Douglas' descriptor isn't as vague as you let on, but there's two additional problems that are added with your elaboration. Starting with the least ugly issue I have, I don't understand what's supposed to be important about how Douglas tells you about Joint. As far as his point will go, he's just an innocent party who didn't deserve to hate Clay lobbies at him. If there's more to be gleaned from describing him, you don't explain why and leave your own point coming off as vague. And now that we're on you being vague, what was that line? When it comes to things that aren't important, you'll talk about it for three minutes, but when it comes to things that are important, you'll barely say anything? Um, where the fuck did this come from? Not only is this point really unfortunate given what I brought up, but there's no context to what this is supposedly referencing or why it's such a problem. For all I know, Douglas Manage just elaborated on a point a little longer than he really needed to, and was unaware of a simpler manner of getting his point across. Something that could just be a flaw he may not have known of, and not something he should be condemned over. Why would you even bring this up in this manner? Actually, I'll keep it in the folder. This will come back. Now, Clay, I just find it so funny how you constantly harp on the mysterious Mr. Enter and O3B Good for complaining about stupid, unimportant bullshit when here you are doing the exact same shit. Complaining about stupid, unimportant bullshit. This no you is hilarious, but for the wrong reasons. Three to be succinct. The first is that it's missing something important for it to be relevant. The time Douglas hounded anyone for complaining about stupid unimportant bullshit. And no, you don't count Clay. Douglas is telling you to plot this what you please. The second is how you're using three videos that a 2016 Douglas would not know he'd make. Fun fact, the things we know today will never be the same as the things we know tomorrow. Don't use new sources to try and dismiss old arguments, it's invalid criticism. And finally, there's the videos themselves, because of course I'm going there, you guys know who I am. Disney Channel's true colors of ineptitude. This was discussing Disney Channel's poor handling of Amphibia's season 2 finale, and their inability to communicate their decision for postponing it to the creators, the audience, and even publishers. Nothing that really denotes complaining. Why did Disney abandon 2D animation? 
This is just explaining why Disney abandoned 2D animation. His dance aren't even pleasant in it, outside of an anecdote that isn't even a complaint. So this doesn't look evil. The Night Daytona ruined animation domination. This is similar to the True Colors video, but with Fox's inability to communicate to its audience being highlighted after a tragic rain delay at 2021's Daytona 500 caused Fox programming to completely push back their planned lineup. Again, nothing that denotes complaining, just criticism at best. All three of these videos being just informational deep dives on what was trending topics at the times, you pointing to them as stupid unimportant bullshit without any explanation only tells me this is just you blowing your bias against the topics. You're just being petty. Get over yourself. Douglas will at least explain why what you're doing is bullshit. You just load it at the wall and hope people see it as an argument. I mean, seriously, it's a, is it really a crime to be excited about something and record your reactions to it? No. It's just really obnoxious and lazy. I don't think the excuse how you will pick a dick though. And those aren't justifiable reasons to go after them the way you did. I've been soured on people tossing out lazy as a condemnation due to how it's often made without regard to the effort utilized, you know, the thing you're supposedly criticizing, and is instead used as a pejorative on whatever they perceive as low quality, or even worse, things they don't like. Thank most people who chose to be really obnoxious on their darts on the slideshow format for that. I don't watch reaction videos from people who make that a primary style of their content, but I've seen reaction videos from creators reacting to things congruent with their interests, and they tend to be marketed around the response they have and their thoughts on what they react to, which tends to work because they usually have an invested interest in what they react to and an audience interested in their perspective. Could this be true for anyone in the reaction community? Maybe. However, you ultimately didn't cover the reaction community. You covered reaction videos as a whole, because you had no care in what you're talking about. I'll expand on that in a moment. That entire thing was about the point of laziness. Now, obnoxious just comes off as a you problem. I already addressed how no one is forcing you to watch these reaction videos. Sometimes I would want to watch a certain YouTube video, but then I... Actually, how about I let this guy, the guy you constantly rip off, explain it to you? This sort of extends to uh, a situation that I had a few months back where I was looking for the Mayweather Pacquiao fight. Eventually went to a Camhor website. A Camhor was streaming the Mayweather Pacquiao fight in a little box right next to her. It was, it's just like any of the reaction videos. She was fucking streaming it. I wasn't there for that bitch. I was there to watch the Mayweather Pacquiao fight. And that's what all reaction videos are. See, the problem with you just opting to let iDubbbz explain your point is that it does a poor job at establishing your dogs. Whoever iDubbbz ran into when he was looking for that boxing match, it doesn't speak for the majority that is reaction videos or streams. If you have no interest in the person making the reaction video, then yeah, of course you won't care for it. Just like how if you don't care for heavy metal music, you won't want to listen to heavy metal. I won't deny the notion that the person behind the reaction video may not be doing enough to engage with the audience, thus making that aspect less desirable, but that's an issue with an individual, not the concept as a whole. Also, still no explanation on what's obnoxious or lazy about them. Do you see why people think you're a hateful asshole, Clay? Because you literally took time out of your day to attack somebody who not only didn't deserve it, but did nothing to you to warrant that kind of response. Again, I don't know who this guy is, and I don't care. I just picked a random video and said reaction video suck. It took me like 5 seconds to tweet that, and then I forgot all about it like 10 seconds afterwards. And this is where I get into you not caring about your actual point. You just picking some random E3 reaction to just bitch about reaction videos caused you to attack someone who just wanted to show his excitement for the Clash and Saint shortly being announced. That was a point of Douglas you just skipped over. Apparently, I must not have gotten the memo at all, because apparently it's a crime. It's a travesty to be excited about a Crash Bandicoot Remaster trilogy, because according to Clay Claymore here, it's one of the most stupid, awkward, most cringiest things that you could do on the interwebs. It doesn't really matter that you don't care about who he is. Douglas's point would stand because you still attacked someone who did nothing to you and didn't deserve it. It also hurts the main idea of your tweet because your example was not someone in the reaction community, but just somebody who made one reaction video. Unless your distaste is for the entire genre, in which case, congrats! You're a living example of why don't like don't watch is still a relevant rebuttal. You said the exact same fucking thing as you said previously on the video. Why did you skip that part of that kid Douglas's video if you had nothing new to say about it? I'd imagine it was because Douglas was directing the question at Clay. 
When you called this with Joint Pointless the first time, that was valid because Douglas was trying to introduce Joint to the audience and hadn't made any point about it yet. This time he has a reason to bring it up because Douglas uses what Joint did in his reaction video to explain why people wouldn't be fond of him and he brought up that he didn't know who he was, likely to say he wasn't trying to be malicious. Which didn't really do anything but that's not what's being addressed here. Though this is likely Blaze trying to call out repetition, especially considering what his next point would be, but not only is his point worded like he's wondering why Clay cut in at this point, it honestly isn't a problem for him to reiterate a previous point if it's related, of reasonable length, and are able to avoid being redundant. Also, and this is a nitpick I'll be brief for once, I'm not a fan of you being like, why'd you skip to heal, without any indication of how much Clay has skipped. With that and how you skip around in your commentary without any indication, it can confuse your audience on what was skipped between Clay and Douglas' video. This instance wasn't egregious, but it's something worth considering overall. Especially when I told you before about informing your audience when you skip and you just... didn't. It doesn't affect you, so why do you give a shit? I could ask you the same question. This tweet had absolutely nothing to do with you, and it wasn't directed to you, or this guy, or anyone in particular. And yet, we went on to piss and moan about it for like two minutes. The O We Action Community. The O We Action Community. The O We Action Community. Also, you're deflecting. Douglas is criticizing your actions. It doesn't have to affect him personally for him to think you're being a cock. Well, can I say reaction videos don't have to affect me to criticize them on my Twitter? Yes, you can say that. But you didn't. You did this shit. You literally must think you're some sort of content cop, are you? Funny that you call me a content cop considering you are the one who constantly rips off our dubs. Tell me you didn't steal the idea of quote unquote examining people on YouTube from him. Your videos are formatted very similar to his. Except you forgot to steal his ability to do research, his comedy, his editing skills, and overall likability and repeatability of his videos. Because iDubbbz invented the idea of bitching about people over the internet, obviously. <sighs> That's honestly pointed at both Douglas and Clay, but at least Douglas was just making a pot shot towards Clay's perceived attitude. Clay wants to call Douglas a content cop whip-off over the smallest shit. iDubbbz isn't the only rant to it, and someone who chooses to rant about someone or something they dislike over a camera doesn't mean they're whipping off content cop. Fuck off. Clay, I can teach you how to make videos. To every autistic person who sucks at voice acting, if you're gonna do a video reading tweets in a funny voice, don't waste your time! Oh, hi, absurd and inappropriate ableism. How are you doing? Just do what I do. Use a funny text-to-speech program. Clay, I can teach you how to make videos. Makes reaction videos. Yeah, how about no? That was not 100% perfect, but notice how much funnier that was. No, it really wasn't. And that's not me being like, humor is subjective. I don't understand what humor is derived from having Applejack, GLaDOS, and Scout read some dumbass tweets. In fact, I don't understand what humor is supposed to be derived from reading a tweet in general. There may be the instance of someone reading it in a mocking tone, but that's not for humor. Most of the time, it's in the veil of a pot shot. Whatever you are trying to accomplish with this doesn't work. And while he doesn't mention my name directly, I'm fairly confident that he was taking a shot at me when he says I can teach you how to make videos. And the context behind this tweet was a video that I made titled Some Advice for Clay Claymore, in which I gave Clay advice on how to make his videos better because I had a few problems with it. And what gives you the impression Clay even saw this video or that it might not be talking about someone else entirely? Honestly, this is quite presumptuous of you, especially given how you'll then use this to go on this spiel about how he did no research on you. Which becomes really unfortunate when we come into the land of hindsight, where Clay actually debunks this in his video. And while he doesn't mention my name directly, I'm fairly confident that he was taking a shot at me when he says I can teach you how to make videos. Well, it turns out your confidence was in vain because I was not talking about you at all. I was actually talking about Snoop's man. In fact, somebody asked me who I was talking about. And I told them it was Snoop Man. Yeah, not a particularly smart move on Douglas's part. I don't know if you know this, but I'm a critical analyzer. I do rants. I do commentaries. Hell, I have a series titled The Guide to Surviving the Internet in which I uncover the history of important figures in internet culture. No thanks to Doug. We already got someone who does that and he's a million times funnier than you will ever be. I'm still baffled that nobody ever pointed out the blatant copycat nature of Doug's videos. Given your example here isn't from the series Douglas mentioned, maybe it's not a valid dot, Einstein. 
That said, do you plan to point out this copycat nature, or are you looking at someone who may have been inspired by internet historian and wanted to put his own spin on the concept as a whip-off? Because that's close-minded. Don't gatekeep others from participating in forms of content because of some entertaining big name. This really goes to show the complete lack of research you inhibit on any of the people you talk about. Seriously, Clay, if you're going to insult me, do it properly, and by that, would it have killed you to do some goddamn research about my channel? You said that already. Oh, this is very ironic coming from you. Since you have repeated your point a lot throughout the video and are about to do it yet again later on in the video. What makes you think that you have the right to use this clip when you repeat your own point so fucking much? Man, you're such a hypocrite. Hypocrisy doesn't mean he can't point out an issue he also suffers from. And no, harming credibility doesn't mean the point should be affected. There's a difference between plot this what you pleach and a too quickly. Also, I want to point out how the repetition Blaze mentions has only come up twice, with one of those instances stretching around nearly six years. I grant you, complaining about repetition one step at a time would make you repetitious by nature. However, you can avoid that by just pointing out everything that's repetitious in one interjection. This would have been the time to do that, but I guess we'll get there later. I mean, seriously, this the whole thing just comes off as hypocritical. Hold on, when you're using text specifically while you spend the rest of the video, you should text to speech. As for your point, well, who fucking cares if he says seriously a law? This is such a massive nitpick, it isn't even funny. Did you just try to dismiss something as a nitpick after making one of your own? Really, what problem is there with Clay opting for text in this instance? Especially for a part that just points out more of Douglas's redundant wording. Which, if I may, when someone is going unscripted and not clear to ad lib, they commonly repeat certain words or phrases when they try formulating the dots. You know, repetition. Something you've complained about in this video. Seems odd that you just forgot about that. The whole thing just comes off as hypocritical. Because apparently, it's wrong for Burke. Is it near? Did the whole room suddenly get darker? I guess we can add terrible and inconsistent lighting to the list of things this tell in the sport routinely fucks up. What a horrible night to have, of course. Are you kidding me, Clay? Douglas's point is fucking garbage here, and you're gonna bitch about his lighting? Ugh. Um, Clay, did you realize the whole KKK thing was a joke? <laughs> the whole thing just comes off as hypocritical. Because apparently, it's wrong for Berg Productions to joke about the KKK or say the n-word even though it's in a completely joking manner, but it's totally okay for you to call autistic people Spurgs. And yes, Spurg is a derogatory term for those who have Asperger's who experience violent episodes. Apparently, that is completely okay to say, but oh, the minute somebody jokes about the KKK or says the n-word in a joking manner, oh my god, it's the worst thing in the world, they're racist, they're this, they're that, and blah 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 blah. In my personal opinion, Calling somebody a Spurg is just as bad as calling somebody the N-word. They're both derogatory terms. And at the end of the day, calling somebody out who uses derogatory terms in a joking manner when you yourself call other people derogatory terms in a non-joking manner makes no sense. Do you recall how I said Blaze's point was more of a too quickly than a warning of hypocrisy? Yeah, this statement blows for a similar reason. The hypocrisy here is very poorly defined due to the accompanying point. So Clay calling Borg racist for saying a slur against black people and saying that he would join a group that wants to commit black genocide because of his dislike of Clay is a problem due to how Borg is just joking. Yet Clay is being condemned for using an abler slur. Why can't we assume that Clay is joking when he does that shit? How is Borg's comments different from what Clay has said? Where were the examples of Clay calling people by said slur? Why should Clay be okay with jokes he finds racist? Mind you, I don't like either of these slurs and jokes being thrown around from either party, but you're trying to make Clay look wrong in both regards, which is bullshit. Pick a lane, preferably call out the use of ableist slurs against people, because that's worth criticizing on its own. It's like the pot trying to call the kettle black. Oh, are you gonna call me racist for that, Clay? No, because a common phrase about hypocrisy that references the color of black is not the same as someone saying they'd join a group that wants to commit black genocide because of one annoying black man, you goddamn bug-eyed faggot. Who the fuck is gonna remember that reference? Jesus. 
I imagine this is what most people who obsess over E3 look like. Calling a gamer a fat, socially awkward, basement-dwelling man-child loser. How original of you, Clay. Like, I haven't heard that one before. It's funny how this segment is supposed to show how quote-unquote salty I am. Have you ever wanted to go to a safe space filled with glorious salty tears? Just go to Clay Claymore's Twitter page. And yet so far, the only salty one I see is Doug himself. Congrats on making another no you argument that serves no purpose against what Douglas is saying and doesn't invalidate any of his points. Do you have an actual point now or do you wish to waste more of my time? If you've seen one Clay Claymore video, you've pretty much seen them all because they're all exactly the same. In fact, I'm going to teach you how to make a Clay Claymore video in three Easy steps. Step one, find a video- Do you really not know how to phrase a video title in place? Step Even the most two, basic video editing programs allow you to do it easily. You failing at that is really embarrassing. Yeah, it absolutely is. Valuable fucking contribution. Someone joining on the same words is a nitpick, but someone who decides to animate their tets, that's a damn problem and they're pathetic for doing so. What the fuck are the priorities I'm dealing with here? Also, not only is this arbitrary as fuck since the text is big and moves at a slow pace, so it's not difficult to read, but once your bitching ends, we see Douglas use central text that stay still. Both of you, get your heads out of your asses. But they didn't say anything particularly new or useful for that matter. I mean, Hold on, why is everything so blurry now? Is because ben the and now you have on a different video. shirt. You're said, seriously telling me this video took you more than a day to make? Well, yeah. So, it doesn't really mean much to the final product, but does bringing attention to that even accomplish? Another arbitrary thing to bitch over? Yeah, that's totally it. Me, honestly, I find it hard to believe too, considering that this video's lack jump cut. We see his room darken, concluding he recorded his little thought segment at night. And here, it's brightened up, alongside Douglas's change of clothes, meaning it's the next day. There's no arguing that Douglas's video took him more than one day to make. Even if there was, lack of jump cuts isn't indicative of a video's time frame. Where did you even get that idea? <laughs> He tries to discredit Ben by calling him a quote-unquote second-rate shit animator because he drew sexually explicit pictures of <gasps> cartoon characters. No, 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 no. We cannot have that. Oh, uh, you know, I, I can go around calling other people Spurgs and saying all of this dumb shit. I can go around calling people man-children and retards and all of this shit. Oh, but if you draw sexually explicit pictures of cartoon characters, that's a problem. We gotta shut that down. We cannot have that. Seriously, Clay? Sexually explicit pictures of cartoon characters have existed for years. Have you ever even heard of Rule 34? At this point, there are so many sexually explicit pictures of cartoon characters existing on the internet that it's no longer shocking or surprising. So I initially had no idea what Douglas was talking about and made a couple arguments based around the lack of context. But later, during scripting another interjection, I did find a reference to the situation he's discussing here. So what's described is basically condensed in a video from Clay titled, Bend a Little Bitch. As far as what's said about Ben's line cartoon porn, Clay just calls it laughably bad. That's it. Given what I was ready to argue before, this revelation just pisses me off. Douglas makes it seem like Clay is reacting in this overdramatic manner, but all he did was insulted. Despite how the original arguments I had are pretty much bunk, the last statement is at least applicable. Clay could just deny that he overreacted and this shit would mean nothing. You totally imported that VTuber shark girl, don't you? You seem like the type to have that shit saved on your computer and then get angry when people tell you that's really creepy. Are you functionally incapable of presenting a counter-argument and feel the need to spout shit from every orifice on your body to cover up for your lack of a damn brain? Legit, this comes out of fucking nowhere and doesn't do jack shit, then it some disgusting shit on Douglas's character. Fuck off. Also, in reference to the aforementioned revelation from my interjection on Douglas, I hate this cutaway from Clay even more. He didn't reference his video on Ben, he didn't bother saying Douglas was overplaying what he said, he couldn't even be fucked to thought another useless no-you argument. Instead it was this shit. Ugh, whatever. Yeah, well that bit, this is a poor argument on his part. That's like saying you should be okay with rape, so it's so common. The fact that it's common certainly doesn't mean that you have to like it. 
I am pretty sure the circumstantial differences in public reaction would cause your counter-argument to not work, since Douglas's point was built on flooping. The general reaction to cartoon porn is, at worst, mixed. If someone's reaction to rape isn't negative, that's considered a red flag. I don't even think your main point is necessarily wrong, but it could have been done without the extreme example of rape. In fact, can we as a community please forego the idea of using WAVE as a go-to comparison against parentheses, shitty and or disagreeable thing and parentheses? I'm positive there might be an exception to the rule, but every time I've seen this comparison come up, it's always done towards something mundane or too extreme a comparison and inadvertently commits appeal to emotion. Ugh, moving on. <laughs> And well, yes, Elliot Roger is a creepy, self-absorbed, entitled psychopath. If you followed the Isla Vista shootings back in 2014, you already know that. So again, you're not saying anything new or useful. You're literally just rehashing and regurgitating shit that people already know about. Shit that people have already discussed at arm's length. Okay, Douglas. Question. What if you haven't been following those shootings? What if there were people that were interested in Clay's thoughts about it? What if the information isn't necessarily a concern to Clay and he just wanted to vent some thoughts? Now, I don't know what these videos were like. They were most likely taken down by YouTube since references to Elliot Rogers' videos usually result in a community guideline strike. But I don't like the notion of saying Clay can't talk about old topics on the basis of other sources apparently talking about it at arm's length. It's unfairly limiting. And honestly, if you're, having, if you're having to scrape the bottom of the barrel to find new ideas to make videos about, then you should probably rethink your entire approach to making videos. I mean, I'm saying, seriously, Ben the Looney's peak of relevance was from 2012 to 2014, and Elliot Rogers' peak of relevance was in 2014. These subjects are not relevant anymore. People don't give a shit about them anymore. But yet, you continue to dig them back up purely to generate views because these are things that people knew about once in a time. Because according to your warped logic, if something was relevant back once upon a time, aka a few years ago, then it must be still relevant now. That's presumptuous. Besides, we all do videos for views. That's a basic expectation when you publicly post a video to YouTube. This point is always garbage. The concept in this is also contradictory. The topics peaked in relevancy long ago, but Clay brings them up for views. That's not how that works. A lot of people are less likely to pay attention to old topics, and Clay actively choosing to bring them up shows to us that he's trying to make them relevant in what he just felt like adding his own input. Or, as he'll put it, he makes videos for himself. I make my videos largely for me. Which is a valid way of going about your content. If that's a problem for you, tough shit. That probably means that his content isn't for you. His input is the main draw of his content. If you don't care for it, then you won't like it. If this sounds familiar to you, then the term you're looking for is irony. By the way, you're gay. So as you can see here, I just simply asked Clay on Twitter why he blocked Schnoz, man, and Clay said it was because Schnoz was being supposedly annoying. So as you can see, our little tour spat goes on a little bit more. We're really kind of at each other's throats. We're going back and forth, and Clay's just being really defensive and trying to justify his reasons for blocking Schnoz, man, even though it's really stupid. And ultimately, he blocked Schnoz because he requested for Clay to diss him. And no, I am not kidding. I wish I were making that up. All right, so I know what you're thinking. You're thinking, Zion, what's your angle here? Those are just tweets. How does that exactly prove that Clay cannot take criticism or that he just hurls out at homonyms constantly? Constantly. Like, what is your play here? Maybe Schnobs was being annoying, and that, and, and, th and those are very, and those are all very valid points. But I don't think Schnobs is actually being like, what do you mean? Something else. The other bunch is I'm all for the truth. I'm all for the truth. I'm all for the truth. So Clay lied about the reason he blocked Schnobs, man. He didn't block Schnobs, man, because he was annoying. No, he blocked Schnobs, man, simply because of a difference of opinion. No, I distinctly remember blocking him, because he was being obnoxious. Once again, you're ranting about something you merely assumed but could not prove at all, and again, this thing between Shoob's man and myself was none of your business. I've had it pathetic in general, where people bitch about being blocked, or in this case, thrown out of being blocked. I mean seriously, being blocked by someone only means that you can't interact with them anymore. It's not a big deal at all. If you want to complain about them in a YouTube video or on social media, you still fucking can. You can't make your own YouTube videos complaining about that person. What being blocked means is that you won't be able to interact with them anymore. And 
But guess what? No one is obligated to interact with you. If someone doesn't want to interact with you anymore, you accept that we've won. And being blocked is not censorship. Again, you can still talk about them. You just can't interact with them anymore. If someone blocked you and you still want to see their tweets, well, you still can. By using a secret profile, which you only use to view tweets, and you don't use it to leave comments or anything like that. I don't think there is ever a valid case when people complain about being blocked or complain about someone blocking others. So I only just realized this last minute, but because of Clay's dumbass, a lot of Douglas's point was cut and skewered, which in turn will make my next interjection confusing. I was going to play this content in the interjection after this one, but it's kinda needed here. I wanted to show this one comment that Schnobs made about Clay Claymore and what he really thinks about his videos. This comment in particular, I think, is really poignant and it really shows why Clay uses ad hominem so much and why you cannot take criticism to save his life. I think you are slapping his ass too much, dude. Not trying to be a jackass, but I think you should do a better form of commentating. Well, I will give you this. At least Mr. Enter and O3B Good aren't talking smack about people. All your videos are just slapping their asses. I think your videos are very hateful. They're not even funny. You have the potential to be a good YouTuber, but I think you blew it. Now, Schnobs man brought up some very good points, and honestly, I agree with them. By the way, when he says Clay is slapping their asses too much, he's basically referring to the fact that Clay focused so heavily on the mysterious Mr. Enter and O3B Good, making a total of 17 videos about them, so much so to the point where it comes off as obsessive. So Clay lied about the reason he blocked Schnobs man. He didn't block Schnobs man because he was annoying, no, he blocked Schnobs man simply because of a difference of opinion and said something that clay didn't like it hurt his feelings and so he blocked him because if you don't praise clay claymore in anything but the most exalted light you become expendable to him and you are worthy for a block and that to me is just so incredibly stupid that it it, it defies comprehension sorry about that continuing on but that's not what Douglas is talking about in regards to Snoop's being blocked. It's a byproduct of being blocked, but Douglas's card is focused on Clay supposedly blocking him over a difference of opinion. It's an ethics issue. Whether Snoop has the capabilities or even wants to interact with Clay after this is irrelevant. I do agree that people aren't obligated to give their time to those they don't want to. And in this game of testimonies, I do believe Clay would just block him over something he perceived as annoying and did it to get a reaction. Clay would also be able to reasonably show this interaction happened to further cement how stupid Douglas's claim apparently is, but it's a sort of spat from six years ago. I don't care. Also, I don't think you should be telling your audience how to block evade. That's an obsessive act, guys. It'd be more productive to assess what you might have done or just move on and not kill. There's something in that Kid Douglas's video which was very disorders. He showed a comment where this guy was giving some constructive criticism. And I can easily tell that was not the fucking reason that Clay Claymore blocked that guy. So yeah, he was also being incredibly dishonest. Now that he go it, he has been dishonest in a lot of his videos. I regret ever being a fan of that guy. The nickname that cunt Douglas is rightfully fucking earned. Also jumping in the we would this interjection a little bit since the context was played. While Clay is at fault for dishonestly cutting Douglas's point, Blaze still never plays the previously shown context and does a poor job of conveying what he's talking about. He's trying to adjust Douglas's logic that Clay saw Snob's critiques as dissent and blocked him for that. In regards to Douglas's point, you can consider it conspiratorial given how he talks about aspects of Clay's character that he would have had no reference for and lacks evidence for things he could show. However, calling it dishonest isn't particularly accurate. Douglas doesn't hide Clay's side of the events and addresses the notion of Clay blocking Snoops for being annoying. He just counters it by saying that essentially Clay isn't being completely truthful. Also, what did you see that was the reason why Clay blocked Snoops? Because if it's in the Twitter discussion, then your claim of dishonesty is half-hearted. And misplaced. But that's me still being salty about the Ben chain from Oreoi. That's the end of the first video. So let's summarize this video. Something that Doug desperately needs to learn how to do in all of his videos. I'm a bad YouTuber because I don't like reaction videos. Say mean stuff on Twitter. Say that cartoon porn is bad. And other garbage that has literally nothing to do with Doug. Actually, he said that you're a bad content creator because... You hold double standards on people complaining about meaningless bullshit, love making fun of harmless individuals who do nothing to you, can't do any research on those that critique you, make content that is lazy, repetitive, and sly, cover the same individuals too often, get on to people for using slurs while holding out slurs yourself, overreact to the prospect of cartoon porn, slack up irrelevant topics just to get views, utilize ad hominem often, block those that critique or disagree with you, go after easy targets because you're too afraid to debate people that can properly criticize you, have a personality that goes overboard with the insult 
insults and crosses from a cynical yet constructive critic to a genuine asshole, inspire others to go out the people you cover, blanket every person that enjoys the medium of animation as a man children, don't even elaborate on said stance and continually insult other people's looks while you hide behind your monitor, never showing what you look like or speaking in a video proper, don't really elaborate on anything ever, act more like an internet troll than someone who looked to be taken seriously, and that you're a fucking hypocrite. Oh my god does he love going on about that. <clears throat> mm. That's what this video summarizes as when you actually pay attention and don't try strawmanning what he says so you can attempt flexing your comedic prowess. Also having a video at 1.5 speed and taking notes, that also helped. Keep in mind, Clay only argued two of these while he chose to toss out no you arguments and ignore everything else to bitch about production or make jokes. If it hadn't been clear how little effort Clay is putting in covering a video he chose to address, I hope that can cement it for you. By the way, just like Douglas's makes videos for views point, this talking about shit that doesn't involve you statement Clay loves relying on is also stupid. Mr. Enter and Odly Be Good's bullshit didn't involve your stupid ass, but you had no problem going after them. Same logic. You wanted to criticize them, and Douglas wanted to criticize you. That's why that shit point doesn't work, dumbass. Oh, apparently that's something I'm supposed to cover from Blaze. Say that cartoon porn is bad! Yeah! Here's my opinion regarding that! This is padding! I don't need to know how you feel about cartoon porn. It's irrelevant to the discussion. You don't tie it to a point towards Clay. I can take it out with no issue. Bye. And some of you morons actually thought this was a great video analyzing me and my videos. Yeah, no offense. If you call the people who like that video criticizes you morons, that does in return make you a moron. You're never gonna get anyone on your side by insulting them for liking something that you don't. In fact, it's a very childish thing to do. Now for the record, if you're talking about me specifically, I agree. I was a fucking moron back then for overlooking the flash of the video, but my point stands. You can't call people morons for saying they like Douglas's video. I was a moron for liking Douglas's video, but my point still stands. I don't even think the main idea of Blaze's counter is invalid. It just defeats itself when he chooses to add that tidbit that he would let it like in Douglas' video for no reason. I don't then to just say that Douglas was stupid? I guess while I'm still overlooking my points made editing, I want to expand on this just in case. The reason why I say the point is self-defeating is since Blaze would call himself a moron for believing Douglas originally, then if there were others who also believed Douglas in the past, were convinced they were wrong, they would also think they were morons. Me and Clay calling them such wouldn't be inaccurate. One of the points I skipped from you was how somebody can cover bad points done on a person they don't like. Did you just forget that? Oh, for the record, we're moving on to the second video from Douglas on Clay. I don't know how fucked the time ball will be, but this should be slightly shorter. No promises. Don't you ever dare make a video criticizing me, or I will cry incessantly about your criticism on Twitter. It's really ironic that he says I can't handle criticism, yet he shows two of my tweets that criticize his videos. Looks like he didn't take any of it to heart. But these critiques aren't particularly valid. Shitty camera quality gives us nothing. It's too vague to discern what about the camera quality is bad. And if the visuals aren't a big deal to Douglas, and he just uses the camera to give his audience something to look at, he's able to disregard it easily. Video length over 30 minutes is arbitrary. It deliberately ignores the reasons why the video is the length it is, to just bitch about the video being insert time code here. And the related issues that can be brought up consistently has nothing to do with the video's actual length. And also not valid given the video you made here. Looking tired as fuck isn't a damn critique. It's just insulting how his face looks. Go fuck yourself. The slip point is also stupid for a couple reasons, but we'll address that when Douglas does. Spoiler alert. Also, Douglas telling you to learn how to take critique doesn't mean he has to take every bit of critique he gets. There are some that just aren't valid, such as the points he directed at you that I addressed. And yes, you don't have to take every bit of critique you get, but most also explain why said critique isn't valid. This is coming from the guy who has made countless videos on two subjects that are slowly becoming dead topics. Well, I guess Mr. N isn't a dead topic anymore, is he? Actually, Inter was never going to be an old topic if he still continually makes content that people have legitimate issues with. Evident by certain things he would get heat for, like Nikawama or shit anti mask dates. This is also why calling content creators old topics never works. Similar to what I said in Episode 7, when the person in question does something new worthy of critique, then it's a new discussion worth happening. Actually, I was going through your videos, 
and I found out that in the year 2016, when this video was made, you yourself made three videos on Mr. and the, the supposed dead topic. I don't know. That seems a little hypocritical, doesn't it? So you can bring up relevant examples for the points you want to make. The fuck was the point with that last argument then? God damn it. The point is debatable, but Douglas's distinction for covering old topics isn't clear. So I'll let you have this one. Still pissed though. And this is coming from the guy who made a video on A-Log, another irrelevant dead topic that was notorious for making videos on Christian back in 2008. When Doug made this video, the only A-Log thing I made was just taking four of his videos and combining them into one long video. The only comments I made was through the old YouTube annotations. I did make a video about A-Log about a year ago. But are you really going to defend this perverted garbage? What am I saying? Of course you are. I cannot begin to express how mentally exhausting this bullshit is becoming from your goofy motherfucking ass. Little shampoo, probably gonna die. It smelled like fruit. That was a lie. And as for me supposedly using scripts to do these rants, well... Yep, you totally got me, Clay. This is the script. This is the script right here that I used to write my rants. Douglas, this isn't a script for one of your rants. What the fuck? I don't write a script for these rants. In fact, I don't write scripts for the majority of the videos on my channel. Oh, then why the fuck did you show off some random script? This probably should be a reason why you need a script. Among other reasons, but that can wait. Even your sarcastic bits are too damn long. Speaking of too damn long, let's look back at that script he showed us. Notice how most of this script is just run on sentence after run on sentence. It's just one long wall of text. I mean, look at this. Eat an entire ass. The thing is, I almost never write scripts for my videos either. I usually only do for my skit videos. There are a few times where I do write scripts for my videos or other skit videos. I know how to make a paragraph at a reasonable length. And I also know the basics of such pronunciations and stuff like that. The fact that me, so who doesn't even write scripts very often, can do it better than he does is beyond sad. You know, Blaze, maybe if you did write a script, you'd be able to recognize that getting onto Douglas for how he formats a script that likely only he would read is fucking stupid. At least I want to hope you have that level of awareness. Also, speaking directly to you, Blaze, I remember the one script you gave me when you asked for my input on a project of yours. And no, you didn't. But that was also quite a while ago. Like, a couple years. So I'm willing to believe that maybe you got better at formatting your script in time. Hint. 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 I don't know where you ever got the idea that I write scripts for these rants, but I'm gonna make it abundantly clear. I don't write a script for these rants. In fact, I don't write scripts for the majority of the videos on my channel. Even though, yes, the script that you just saw is for my upcoming video on Disney Animation, and yes, the top 10 YouTube controversies of 2016 will also be scripted, the majority of my channel's output is and will continue to be unscripted, as that's what I just personally prefer. And even if I did use a script, how does that detract from the overall points that I'm making? How does that make my videos somehow less inferior? You do realize that the majority of commentators and even some ranchers use scripts for their videos? Here's the thing, just because somebody uses a script for their videos does not make them inferior, and it also doesn't make them superior. Just like how you and me prefer- So while well, Doug just rambles on as he does, I noticed that he did not address any of the criticism I made about his videos. My issue wasn't that he's using a script, my issue was about him making it obvious that he's just reading his script while he was on camera. In all of his videos, or at least the ones I managed to stay awake through, he never makes eye contact with the camera. Naturally, I assumed he was reading from a script. Even in this video, he still looks like he's reading from a script. Clay, can you please stop finding new ways to bullshit? You complained about Douglas's redundant wording and how he rambles in your previous part. How do you come to the conclusion that he's been scripting his rants because of how he doesn't always look at his webcam? And I say always because his eyes move about every well. Well, when you pay attention to them, I know I wasn't. It's such an unorthodox thing to call out for something rather circumstantial. It just doesn't work. Oh my god, you're saying the exact same fucking thing that you said in the commentary you made on that kid Douglas back in 2016. The only difference is you're saying it through text to speech rather than through text. Why the hell did you even feel the need to cover this portion of the video? Why the hell did you skip it? You shoot him as you're addressing the exact same fucking thing that you did in that other video. Really, Blaze? This again? You know what? Did you read his description? I know it's a year and a half late, but that's usually how long it takes to watch that Kid Douglas video, let alone three of them. In any case, I'm happy to finally be done with this redo. 
I must admit, it's a shame the original videos weren't this thorough back in 2016, because holy fuck, how did people really not pay attention to some of the bullshit he was spewing? The video is meant to serve as a revisit to the lands by Douglas. With it, he'll most likely re-address things that came from his old responses. Not only to say that he stands by the points he made, but also because his audience will likely not be the same as it was in 2016. Please keep up. Clay is already annoying me enough. I don't need seconds. If this were a scripted video, if I really did script my rants, it would sound practically perfect. If this were a scripted video, it would literally sound just the same as your other videos. It'd be long, boring, disorganized, and incoherent. The fact that there's absolutely no difference between a scripted and unscripted video just shows how bad you are at writing or making any sort of videos. Because that's totally based on something empirical and not how you're an obstinate biased prick, right? Also, kept it up. Whether Douglas scripts or not, his videos will always be garbage. Damned if he does, damned if he doesn't. And no actual advice on how Douglas can improve his writing. Beautiful. Just the best type of commentary. Fuck me. Ugh. I already referenced three of Douglas' videos earlier. They don't reflect what his works were like in 2016, but let's face it, he's talking about his newer works when he makes this statement. He's referenced them enough times, including the parts I skipped. Anyway, in comparison to the rant we've been suffering through, the videos I have linked were focused and kept to their consistent narratives that were addressed earlier. They're also under 20 minutes. Whether or not they're entertaining is irrelevant as I've explained in other circumstances. Bottom line, this point is absolutely shit and you're absolute shit for making it. This is why you're one of the most hated people in the commentary community. Halton, are you referring to the commentary community in the world of big and doodle tones? If so, I hate to say this, but you are still ever part of the specific commentary community. Or are you perhaps referring to the one involving Levy and Pyrocynical? Yeah, he was still ever part of that fucking community either. In fact, I don't think he was ever part of any community considered the commentary community. I don't think he was ever one of the most hated people in a community like that as he was never a part of a community like that. He doesn't have to be part of the slideshow CC or mainstream CC to be hated in it. I glance you, I'm not sure if he was hated, but I wasn't around the community at the time, so I can't tell you one way or another way. But him being in it and being hated in it aren't usually tied. You think your shit doesn't stink, you want people to kiss your ass all the time, and you think you're some sort of an internet god. When in reality, all you do is make shitty internet videos. I mean, your ego is so overinflated that I'm surprised you haven't become the next Kanye West already. And the difference between you and Kanye West is that even though Kanye West is an extremely egotistical person, I don't think anyone's going to disagree with that fact. He at least has made good content that the vast majority of the populace enjoys. You notice we went from talking about videos being scripted to talking about Kanye West. No wonder this video is 33 minutes long. You're even worse than Mr. Adam! The conversation doesn't abruptly blanch off like you insinuate. The Kanye example lasts two sentences as a click fire comparison to his audience to understand how big an ego he thinks you have. Or probably have given your responses to this section. Please extend your attention span to more than 8 seconds. It would make this significantly easier to get low. Nah, I would say that they are about the same when it comes to how much they track out their videos. Because that's totally based on something empirical and Blaze would be more than happy to elaborate on this and show how their pattern is similar, right? I mean, he would do that, huh? Otherwise, it'd be a worthless interjection with no merits to it. And your problem with me, Clay, it's not that my video was too long, it's not that I'm a spur, and it's not that I supposedly didn't bring anything new to the table. Your problem with me is because I destroyed you, it's because I criticized you. It's because you got destroyed by some 22-year-old autistic animation video game loving loser like myself, and that probably ate away at you. That probably bruised your fragile little ego. And I know you say you don't like to give a fuck, but let's be honest. You truly cared because look at the reaction. Look at how you responded to my last video on you, Clay. That, those are not the reactions of a man that clearly doesn't give a fuck. Uh-huh. Two rather innocuous tweets poking fun at your production. That's what you're basing this on. Not a good move to try and gas yourself up off this, especially after spending three minutes on how much of an egotist that Clay is. Not the best optics, though. Your problem with me is because I destroyed you. It's because I criticized you. No, it's definitely the other stuff you mentioned. 
You didn't destroy me. You sure as hell bored me though. Yeah, it is an asshole but when his part to think that he knows more about your true motives than you do. Hi, I don't want to take up too much of your time since my problem isn't with either of these points. But instead, I just want to be a little petty and bitch about how this section from Places End was out of order. How the fuck did you- Now, I could spend hours pointing out the endless salt mines. But we have so many of your flaws and inconsistencies to point out throughout the rest of this video, such as... Wait a second, play that song again. That song sounds very familiar, but where? Where did I hear that song before? Wait a minute. So, uh, I'm not making fun of an autistic kid, I'm instead making fun of a retarded adult. I'm so excited. Both of these videos came out in the same year, around the same time. So don't give me that, it's just a coincidence, Jake. Good news, I write gamer, you're officially off the hook. Look, I know we've been at this for a while now, but I think you're forgetting a particularly important detail in which- Hold it, White Dale, Luna Dick the Gay! I see the word is yours as that background music. Who do you think you are? I did not buy seven copies of Tony Hawk Underground to be disrespected like this. How of you know I built my plane for hours to get the way to use those clocks? I think you can tell that I find this little spiel to be stupid. And are you insinuating that Douglas is a plagiarist for this? A transition clip? Items doesn't own that music cut and isn't the only person allowed to make a transition with it. I've never seen such an absurd slash for a big accusation in quite some time. Alright, I've debunked the horseshit that the Eric Gamer played as the Anchor Video Gamer in a lot of my videos, so I might as well address it here too. This is also padding. Not only is this in reference to a name said in passing, and is not relevant to the discussion in whole, you say that you already addressed this horseshit in another video. You could have saved us all a whole minute and just linked that shit if you wanted to talk about it so badly. In fact, I'll link that video in the description. Think nothing of it, y'all. Consider it material. I mean material. I mean material. I mean material. I mean- I might just do a vid on Philip DeFranco remembers WMAR video. Oh goody. More YouTube drama that I barely remember and isn't really that relevant anymore. Let's skip this part too. If you're really that curious, just go watch the other video. I brought up earlier how Clay's video was supposed to be a reevaluation of the videos Douglas made on him in response to Blaze, but a section like this really calls that into question. Given how you've apparently had no problem repeating, if what Blaze has said is true at least, why are you unable to try and assess the situation in hindsight with information you should easily be able to go to, or take the lazy route of copy-pasting the responses you had into this one? The structure and manner you went about covering this video in general has been sloppy. How it's made on this issue in my final thoughts, though. Run. Ah, uh, the brony justification for being an untalented, no-life piece of shit! At least I'm entertaining people and drawing awful porn instead of doing something worthwhile with my life. No, honestly, that barking of Ben Leloni was warranted. For the past couple of years, he made some very bad videos where he was defending Draven child porn. And it is very disturbing if you think about it. I don't think he's a pedophile, not at all. But the fact that he defended that kind of artwork is still very concerning. Honestly, I miss the times when he was pointlessly complaining about your Cartoon Network. At least back then, he wasn't doing any real harm. Blaze, what the fuck? That was totally uncalled for and not worth bringing up whatsoever. Like, screw context? Not even a damn link or reference for when this happened. Why? Legit, what purpose did that even serve? Shut the fuck up! You're a fucking cunt. So now you are using an audio clip which both includes the word fuck and cunt, although you censor yourself using the word fuck throughout the video. Wow, you're as inconsistent as Angry Joe is when it comes to censoring the word fuck in his videos. So apparently we're returning into this now. Blaze, why does it matter? What if he just prefers censoring himself a character? I doubt he's hung up on slurs, especially given his channel is possible of ableist slurs. This is just a nothing complaint. Oh, and yes, we're going to video delay now. This one isn't as long, actually. So hang in there, we're almost done. Let's keep going. 
As you watch this last part, keep in mind, this is how Doug reacts when someone actually criticizes him. You know, Clay, if you want to bring water to the village, it being purple is a pretty dead giveaway that something is wrong with it. You're bad at this. So Clay Claymore finally responded to me, and I'm honestly disappointed because quite frankly, he didn't do a very good job. He had all this time to come up with a decent response, and he still turned out something shitty. Well, it took me another six years, but hopefully this video was more to your liking. Clay, if I may, Douglas isn't going to kill. At least I hope he won't. But even if he did come in to say he didn't like your video, I wouldn't blame him. Now, as much as I would like to elaborate on how shitty the response is, as you probably expect, it's the same typical Clay Claymore shit that people have criticized a thousand times over. So restating it at this point would honestly be pretty redundant. So what I'm hearing is, you made not one, but two terrible boring videos going after me. Then when I finally respond with accurate criticisms of your videos, you're just going to say the video so without going into detail as to why, nor will you respond to any of the criticisms I made. That's pretty much all this third video is, because, as it turns out, he can talk all sorts of trash about other people. But once they fire back, he backs down very quickly. No, he's saying it's the same shit he criticized you for. While he did say others, it's highly probable that his own critiques were also included. Could he have addressed some points? Yeah, in hindsight, getting some more perspective would be nice in understanding some of the exact issues, but acting like he's backing away from criticism is a bit disingenuous. Though, maybe there's a little bias because I thought your video was clap too. However, if Douglas thought your video wasn't any different from how you've acted before, it's implying that he still finds what he said to be valid, and just doesn't look to rehash things he said previously. You really do like misconstruing what's going on, huh? And why me of all people? I I'd really like to know this, why me? When it comes to critical analyzing, which is what ranters and commentators do, I'm not even the best at it. I'm nowhere near the best at it. I'm okay, but there's so many other people that are far better than me that made excellent videos criticizing you that you could have chosen to commentate on. And instead, for whatever stupid reason that defies any sort of quantifiable logic, you decided that I was worth your time. Probably because you're still butthurt that some nobody on the internet made a video criticizing you. Well, Clay tells us why. He made an exception in covering a video against him because your video was particularly bad. And given how your second video did have a number of flaws, I don't think he was wrong for believing so. That said, if you wanted to weave in your criticism to demonstrate how Clay's continuing his same antics, you could tie his desire to go after your video with his love for going after easy targets. However, that would require you to recognize your rants and observations as potentially flawed. Which, why wouldn't you? You'll explain how your abilities at critique aren't as good as some commentators, yet you'll also be surprised that this same ability might make you susceptible to making rookie mistakes that Clay could call out? It seems the poor objects followed into this final video. Don't ever pick a fight with me. Ever. Because you are going to lose. Oh no, everyone stand back! We got ourselves a badass over here! Yeah, honestly, it's fucking pathetic for a grown ass man to talk like that. This is done for a kindergartner, but not a grown ass man like him. Fuck off, both of you. You know what he means. Douglas has shown that Clay will go after someone multiple times in his previous videos. It's why he's on the defensive. And Blaze, ad hominem. There's no reason to bring up his age to try and acclate him to a kindergartner because he wanted to defend himself. You should know better. On a different note, Blaze has one more valid point before he finishes up his commentary and goes into his final dogs. He ultimately adds very little to the dirt video, so we are done with him completely until my final thoughts. However, I've given enough focus to Clay and Douglas, so I'm going to continue forward in the chain. It's not my fault, nor is it the fault of the various people that have made videos against you, that people know how shitty you are. And as little as you like to believe, I'm not a hater. I'm really not. You don't actually have any haters, bro. When people make videos detailing how shitty of a commentator you actually are- It really does feel like he's projecting it. All because he can't handle the fact that someone actually responded back saying his videos are no good. I wonder how he'll react to being schooled a second time, with this video being more thorough than the last one I made. I know you like your repetition, Clay, but the amount of times I could joke of your video being dull is getting a little stale. Seriously, you skipped over several minutes of Douglas's videos, really addressed what he's actually talking about, and spent a lot of your time bitching about Douglas's production and how bored you are. Even with points I could concede to being valid, they are skin deep and few and far between. Let's bounce off this point pleasant as an example. So Douglas is projecting based on him being salty about how you called his video bad. Okay, how so? 
because I can point to this shit from your video six years ago, and how Douglas explained that you commonly like to lump everyone in one non-specific mold, and make the case he's trying to tell you that his video may not be the best representation of the critique you've been getting. What would you respond with there? Since your points barely get any elaboration, they can bend under the slightest bit of flesh or, and that's what makes your commentary weak. Mr. Krabs, can I have a- I also couldn't help but notice his lack of eye contact is even worse here than in his last video, which just tells me that deep down, he knows he's projecting. That's a sumptuous dipshit. Even ignoring how Douglas might just be unable to maintain eye contact for a long period of time, all that looking at his eyes could tell us is that he's emotional. Which would still be a sumptuous in that regard, but at least that can be confirmed with his wording. Also, why do you like looking into Douglas's eyes? Given your previous insults at his looks, I doubt he was unattractive. Either that, or maybe he's got lolicon pornography taped to the ceiling. You saying that because it went poorly when you tried it? Your content is devoid of anything that could, that could be considered, you know, entertainment. It's devoid of substance, it's devoid of effort, it's devoid of entertainment, it's devoid of competent video making. This shit has been what I've been skipping over several times. It's repetitive as hell. Clay shows thumbnails of content that Douglas hasn't fucking made yet to just be like, Well, your videos are fucking cleansed too, you spoilage. It's not a damn argument. I could literally just say you both suck and it helped both of you. If you want to make an actual counsel, you could try going into how your audience might enjoy your content, or talk about the effort that goes into your work. Then again, considering the state of this video, I can see how that might not be particularly persuasive. GG. The next two minutes has nothing more than unrelated level that Clay can't even prove, but the videos are done. We can finally come to a close. Douglas, it has been six years since you released the Bleed videos that were talked about, and unlike Goofy Overdale, I can see that people can change over the course of half a decade. So I don't know how much these videos are representative of your content now, thus I won't make any proclamations. That said, if your thoughts on your videos on Clay are somewhat positive, uh, yeah, they're bad. I can't understate the repetitiveness of you calling Clay a hypocrite, even when it was fundamentally unnecessary, since some of the actions you tied it to were worth condemnation without it. There's also the fact that evidence seemed oddly circumstantial. Tweets were worth a lot of time, but references to his actions in videos couldn't get a single second. And of course, the unscripted nature of it all. While Clay's and Blaze's representation of your rambling was exaggerated, let me explain that you spent far too much time running around your points with elaboration that could have been condensed or even removed. Hence why I edited your parts as I did. I bet your first video would have been in the 20 minutes margin if you opted for at least basic bullet points. Now why am I putting so much focus on the first video? Well if I can be blazing, the second and third videos shouldn't have existed. After Clay substituted your video to only shit on production, that should have been the confirmation you needed to know he wasn't going to listen. But you got a big head about it, brought the tweets incorrectly, and pushed out a subpar video that Clay was able to pop off about. And then you followed up trying to bolster and victimize yourself at the same time, while realizing Clay wasn't worth your time too late. Quite a sad ton of events. That sort of flaws lie in what you did back then. I don't have much advice for you because the newer stuff I watched from you was inoffensive. Just not stuff I'd watch on a regular basis. So whatever endeavors you carry on with, I hope they see you well. I think it's clear that I didn't like your video, Clay. Production-wise, it was a few media clips removed from being a screen-recorded commentary. Honestly, a guy that's so hung up on production himself and can't even be fucked to give us a different background to stare at. What even is self-awareness? Rest assured, however, my distaste for your video comes less from your production being the literal bare minimum, but more the frustrating points that littered the 50 minute one time. Several of them being repetitive non secretors insulting Douglas's production, Douglas's content, Douglas, and even his viewers on a few occasions. Including what under two cookies that didn't refute Douglas's opinions, a lot of invalid points that refused to engage with the topic of discussion, and a bunch of useless crap with you trying to discredit Douglas, such as your insistence that he's a content cop and in a historian ripoff, as if that's supposed to mean anything to Douglas's critiques of you. However, there's a personal clone that makes me really despise this video. I've been pretty vocal about how commentators should be able to freely cover older videos. Retrospective commentary should have a place in the community, but your video is a prime example of why the pushback against it exists. You had no care for the fact that you were covering a 2016 Douglas rant about 2016 Clay Claymore. 
You kept your lantern 2022, which is why you constantly used Douglas's recent videos to insult him, reacted to Douglas as if he was insulting you now, and made no attempt to consider what Douglas might think of this video as of now. He might not like how he handled his videos on you, but you didn't give him that leeway. You were just looking to tear down a video from six years ago because you were still salty people liked it, even despite your responses. What else am I supposed to think from you drugging up a video from six years ago? Will you drag the creator for what they did six years ago? Not sorry, bad faith videos don't get benefited out. I have no expectation you'll watch, nor care for what I have to say. I didn't call you obstinate for nothing, but if only for formality. Let the entire argument play before cutting in so you can get the full picture. A lobberation doesn't have to be an essay, but a couple of confirming words and phrases can do your point some great favor. And while I won't tell you to change your persona, keep it as jerk ass as you want, if I could ask you to not insult artistic people, use ableist slurs, and call others creeps and pedals without any evidence, I'd appreciate it. And we finally come back to you, Blaze. Now I made this video because Clay's bothered me after I finished yours. You were honestly just here as collateral. I hope that was clear when I told you in private I was making this commentary. Initially, I thought my parts concerning you, while minimal, were just because I had more to say regarding Clay and Douglas. And technically that's true. However, I have to express how many times your commentary was ultimately inconsequential. Don't get me wrong, there were points I skipped because they were good or presented okay. But there were many moments where you just agreed, added next to nothing, and or just went into meaningless tangents. At least two of those were points I made against you previously, I'm sure. That said, I'll cut into the main meat of my big issue with your video. I know you had some sort of bias for Clay, I won't make any proclamations as to why, I just can't help but notice is how despite you covering some of Clay's really toxic points, you somehow came out of it thinking Clay's video was great. Maybe it's just subjectivity, but I don't know. My feelings would be a bit sour if I had simply noticed the commentator just made ad hominem and tossed around the word pedophile loosely. Points I skipped from players. The bigger issue however comes with your bias against Douglas. Let me play this clip from your final darts. Yeah, it's clear that he is a drama whore. It's clear that he is fucking lazy. It's clear that he is dishonest. It's clear that he spends at least three minutes on the same fucking point and many other problems with his videos. Honestly, I have no idea why the hell I used to like his content back in 2016. I regret even thinking of his content as good, since his content is total garbage, no Dr. Paul. And I officially don't respect that kind of class anymore. Since really, he can go fuck himself. But I do respect you, Clay Claymore. Is this really coming from your thoughts with the Douglas we know now? I adjust how Clay didn't give Douglas any leeway and cleared Douglas's video like it was recent, and I'm unsure if you're providing that courtesy evil. If you regret how you went about your thought process and look back at Douglas's video negatively, fine. That doesn't require you to disparage Douglas though, especially for what he made in the past. Alongside with how your statements weren't shown or explained in your video, just adding to this product looking disgustingly biased, as if the moments of you calling Douglas pathetic didn't already show that. Being biased isn't necessarily a problem, but allowing it to cloud your judgement is. Always be vigilant about that, please. Some final points to you, players. Provide links, screenshots, or clips more often so that people can better understand your points. If that's too much for you, don't make those points. Keep it more generalized and common sense, then. Make sure that your points tie back to a critique or expansion of the video you're covering. I don't need your opinion if it means nothing to the discussion. Also, I still stand by that you should let your audience know when you're skipping. That was something I brought up to you previously, and you did it once and never again. Anything else I can tell you in private. We maintain contact, so I know where you'll be. Hey Matt, you finished your thing? Correct. I actually spent some time cultivating a bit of the ground. My results said if I take up a hobby, I could maintain a better thought process. So I chose to take up gardening. Oh, that'd actually be quite nice. I'd love to spruce up the backyard. Come here, I'll order us some flowers. Oh. Well. Huh? Mad? Pardon. Why is this such while talking about how to bury bodies? Don't worry about it. No, wait, but I... Uh, uh, oh, the dot's gone now. I shall order us some flowers. Can you get daffodils? I will get daffodils. Editing all this audio is gonna fucking suck. <sighs> Well, Matt, it's important we take a step back and look at our shortcomings in life. 
That's supposed to continue. Oh my god. It's staggering time! <laughs> oh my god. Okay. What about the use of Comic Sans dicks? What about the use of Comic Sans dicks? Dicks. 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 All the way. Oh my god. Okay. Let me try again. Dictates. 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 Dictates the effort of the. That wasn't even the line. Okay. <clears throat> The simplest of which being there are people. But the general idea is that game. But the general idea is that the game was joint ma But the general idea that the game was joint makes videos around Kingdom Hearts. But the general idea is that the game was joint make. Oh, for fuck's sake. Ugh. The game was joint. Jesus. The variance in those types of content also lends to why Douglas just chose the left. What the fuck am I even saying at this point? God damn it. Something that could just be a flaw he may not have known of. And something he should- I typed this wrong in the script. Um. Which tends to work because they usually have an invested interest in what they we- I'm just now noticing that this might sound redundant. Who do you think you are? I did not buy 27 copy. 27. Interesting.